Great, so this is question 3.1, and it's called 3 and 1. And here we're just wanting to use a single array to implement three stacks, right? So we want to use just, you know, one array, and within it, we want to have our first stack, our second stack, and our third stack. So to do that, um, what we're going to do is I just created a class called stack or three stack array. And I'm just going to describe to you, you know, how I implemented this class. You wouldn't have to kind of write all the code for each of these methods. You just want to describe, you know, how you're able to do this. So I just wrote the code just so you could, you know, see it visually. And as I'm explaining it to you, you might, you know, trigger and get your mind working a little bit. But you would just be able to describe this in words during your interview. So here, um, what I did is I have two arrays, one a values array and one a sizes array. Now the values is simply, you know, storing the actual values for the stacks, right? Stores the elements for all three stacks. And then the sizes array just keeps track of the number of values in each stack. So in this whiteboard here, our sizes are initially all set to zero because none of these stacks have any values. So we have the red stack, the blue stack, and the green stack. Let's say if we added a value to the green stack, then this would be incremented to one because we have one value in this stack now. And so if we added two values here, so two and five, then the blue stack would have a value of one and then it would be set to two. Right, and so if we pop the value off of this stack, then it would be set back to one. So that's kind of the functionality and how essentially the whole stack itself works. So um, one key thing to keep in mind is I added two exceptions. One for if we have a full or an empty stack. So if we're trying to pop when, you know, pop the red stack when it's already empty, we would send that exception or throw that exception. And then if a stack is full and we're trying to push to it, then we want to throw our full stack exception. And that just extends our runtime exception. So to do this, we have just the constructor. We pass in the stack size. And that's to define how many values can be stored in each of these three stacks. So if we pass a stack size of, say, three here, that would look exactly like we have here, where our three stacks each can hold up to three different cells. Great, and that's used just to initialize, you know, an array of sizes as well as our values, right? And so we have, you know, three stacks, so we have three sizes, and the number of values is the number of stacks times how big those stacks are. And that's to hold all the different values. So if we want to push to our stacks, we pass in which stack we want to push to along with the value. And this is where we're going to check whether or not the stack is full or not. And so to do that, we just look at our sizes array and just say, OK, is it equal to our stack size? Right. So if we want to check if our blue one is full, which I'll make it full here, so if this is equal to three, which is our stack size, then clearly it's full, right? So three is equal to three. Next, what we do is when we do push, we just increment our stack size like we've been doing in our whiteboard, and then we just set it to the top value. Now to maintain this top value, we have this index of top method. And this is quite simple, where we first need to calculate the offset, which is just, OK, what number of stack we're dealing with times the stack size. So we know the stack size is 3, because each stack can hold three values. And the stack num is just what you pass as a parameter. And say the stack of nums would be these. So the red stack has a stack num of 0, blue stack 1, and the green stack 2. And so the offset for the blue stack would be three. And because it would be three times one, which equals three. And that would just help you skip over 
these three values stored in the red stack. So you can start indexing within this bounds. Great, and then we have our pop method, and that just makes use of the empty stack exception and the is empty. And that does the same thing as like, you know, is full, where we just check if our size array for our given stack that we want to check if it's empty or not. If it's equal to zero, then we know it's empty, which would be this case here, since we check the sizes at index zero for the red stack, we see that it's zero, so we know it's empty. If it passes this test, then we just grab the top index from our index of top method, and we want to pop from that. So that's here. And then we just decrement our sizes counter in our list. So just like this, we pop off the top one from the blue stack, we want to pop from here, and then we just decrement this counter, right? And so the next index of top would be pointing here. This would be the new index of top. And then finally for our peak, we would just check if it's empty or not, because we don't want to peak if it's empty. And then we just get the values of index of top, right? So for the blue one, we're maintaining that the values of index of top is um, one here, the index of one. And then so we just index into values of that there with the offset. Great, and so the performance of this algorithm would just be, you know, it's all constant time operations. We're just, um, we're using like a direct access array um, to be able to do this. And yeah, so I, I hope that helped and good luck with the rest of your algorithms. Thank you.